Hey guys, it's Angela, and I'm here to review Scream Episode 2, Season 1, called Hello, Emma. So I didn't review Episode 1 for a reason. I did not know that Scream was being made into a TV show until it had already aired, and I was informed about it. And I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, because I'm such a huge fan of the movies and was just afraid that they were going to mess it up. But after watching episode one and two, I decided I really want to review this for my channel because I really did enjoy it. I am a sucker for a murder mystery, that is for sure. And I already know that I'm going to be reviewing Screen Queens when it comes out in the fall. But let's jump right into the episode. So the episode starts off with Rachel, who was the girl kissing Audrey in the video, looking at all the negative comments. The video has been taken down, but the comments are still there, and Rachel cannot block them out like Audrey can. <coughs> Audrey, I feel like, knows the world and knows how people work and has built up this wall to protect herself or just doesn't let things get to her. She's just, you know, has this armor on and is just so tough. But Rachel is very innocent, I guess, and naive, and things hurt her. And... She goes to grab a razor and starts to cut her arms. We see these previous scars from where she has cut before. She gets a call from Audrey. And Audrey's like, don't worry about it. Block them out. I'm going to come over. And she joke, starts joking with her like, I'm already here. And immediately my mind went to, she's the damn killer on the phone. That's not really Audrey. Okay? Okay. We all know this except Rachel. Rachel is looking around her house for Audrey. And goes outside and there's a noose on her patio and she picks it up and Ghostface comes and pushes over and she blinks down and dies. Her little foot twitches and dead. So Emma's walking into school and she's listening to a pod a podcast by Piper Shaw called Autopsy of a Crime and Brooke and Riley walk up to her and Brooke's trying to apologize and Emma's like, You're still on probation, blah blah blah. Um, Sheriff Graham, I think that's his name, is talking to Noah about his fascination with Brandon James, and he said you sent Troy, or Noah volunteers the information that he sent Troy emails, and would have loved to interview Emma's dad, Kevin. But he felt like it would have been a little too sensitive and too far over the line. But we find out that Kevin is the only remaining survivor of the Brandon James massacre. So technically he is not a serial killer, which Noah points out, because it was all done in one day, one time. And Sheriff James, or Sheriff James, Sheriff Graham says something along the lines of, well, Kevin's gone, isn't he? And it just really struck me, like, that. You, why are you saying it like that. Do you know that Kevin's still around lurking in the shadows? Because I have a theory about Kevin, but we'll get to that in a minute. Jake and Will are talking, and Jake's trying to convince Will to dump Emma and focus on this big basketball game he has coming up. Will is just like, no, I need another chance, and I need to make sure you deleted all the cyber stuff about Nina. And Jake said, oh, yeah, yeah, I have. And Jake walks over to his truck where there is blood, goes around and sees douche misspelled on the passenger side door. We later find out that it was Noah after Jake confronts him and like chokes him and threatens to kill him pretty much. He denies it, but he later tells Audrey that it was indeed him and he had all the paint on him at the... Um, last night when he did it. So this explains last week's episode when he was covered in what appeared to be blood, in my opinion, because I don't think that Noah is the killer. That would be too cliche and just so glaringly obvious, and I'd be really bummed if the show went that way. And Noah and Audrey start talking to this um, Piper Shaw about... Nina, she, Piper is just trying to cut through all the bullshit and wants to find out who Nina really was. And Audrey said, you know, she was a stone cold bitch that deserved to die. But I don't think the killer is Audrey either. Um, I do hope that the show has the balls to kill off a main character like Audrey or Emma. I would love to see Emma die. That is so mean to me. 
so mean for me to say, but I would just love it. Like that would be amazing because Sydney never died. Gail never died. Dewey never died. You know, they were all safe. Randy died. And I was just devastated because he was my favorite. But this show to really stand out to me needs to have the balls to kill off a main character. If they go on with the season two, I think it should be focusing on a new town or a survivor from this season gets away and goes to a new town and things start to happen all over again. Not necessarily a main character, but somebody different. I think that I would really enjoy that. And when Jake ran up to Noah and confronted him, his demeanor changed really quickly. If you've watched other people's recaps of episode one, they parallel him to Stu from the first Scream movie. And I can easily see this. You know, Stu was the jovial guy, always joking around. Nobody suspected him. But Jake just went postal really quickly. Jake has always been like the Stu, except in this episode, he really stood out, like, just going after Noah like that. And it was just something that I was, like, keeping my eye on. I really hope the show is not going to parallel the movies with the killers because that would not be very interesting at all. Um, I do like how they're trying to bring in a new generation to Scream because this is, like, one of my favorite movies, franchises ever. And I just would be bummed if it is if the killers are Will and Jake. But for some reason, I think the killer is working alone. And more on that to come. So the student body all gets a gift that says payback is a bitch and it has ghost face right in front of Nina's floating body just sitting there chilling doing the dead man's float in the pool. Everybody gets this gift and it is just I, I laugh because I was cracking up. So I was like oh the killer needs to needs the attention and Noah actually talks about this in the I think during English yeah, because they were talking. Oh, yeah. Okay. In their English class, where the student, where the teacher was younger than the students, especially Karen. That guy's not convincing me he's in high school. Um, but Noah's talking about the killer sent out, sent this out because they need to be recognized on social media. And this really made me think that the killer is working alone. There's always the theory that the killer could be two different people. But in this instance, I honestly think that it's some a solo act. I could be wrong, but that just really stuck in my mind that, you know, they're needing this attention. So if they need this attention so badly, maybe they're just working by themselves. And Riley gets a message while they're talking about all of this that says Rachel has, or a student from another school has died. Audrey rushes out of the room and finds out that it is Rachel and Emma's feeling guilty because she indirectly caused her death. Um, there are two parallels to the movie in this episode. Number one, Rachel hears the girls in the bathroom talking like Sydney did. And the girls in the bathroom say that whoever filmed now has more blood on their hands for this death. Number two is Emma is at work and she goes out into the alley to take some garbage out. And there's a mysterious black hooded figure sitting on, against the wall. The door slams closed and the black hooded figure has moved and is standing in the alley. And Emma runs um, around the corner and right into Will, which is parallel to the movie when Sydney runs and runs right into Billy. I just thought that was random, but okay. Um, and, you know, Will tells her that, I'm sorry, I just, I would really appreciate if you would come to the game, and Emma says, I need to trust you if we're ever going to be together again. Yeah, so Emma goes to the game where she runs into Kieran, who is saying, oh, well, that's classic, like, you got scared and then ran right into Will, are you sure Will didn't do anything? And I'm thinking... Kieran, what is your angle? Because you are new in town, you have no idea what's going on, and why are you pinning these two against each other? What's your motive? Unless he just really is, you know, liking Emma and just pure apart, but I don't believe that shit for a second because everybody in a murder mystery film or show, in this case, is a suspect, unless proven otherwise, and this kid is still shady, but I don't think he's the killer because that would just drive me nuts. What would his motivation be? Because he can't be 
Brandon James's older brother. Um, so why why be involved at all? But then why would the show just throw him in there? Oh, here's Sheriff's son that just randomly comes out of nowhere. I don't know. But I don't think it's him. And while this is happening, Emma's mother realizes that the wounds on Rachel are not consistent to where they found her and is going to rule it a murder instead of a suicide. Okay. We go into, after the game, um, Emma goes home to watch some Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and chill on her couch with some bugles. And the alarm goes off. So she calls the alarm company, which immediately I'm saying killer, killer, killer in my head because I know it's the freaking killer on the phone. And Emma just gave him the password to disarm the alarm system. So great job. Idiot of the week goes to you. Emma Duvall, I think that's her last name. Yeah, idiot of the week. Um, she's talking to this guy who says he's from the alarm company and he's trying to calm her down and says, uh, makes a slip that says, you look tired. And she's like, what? And kind of starts piecing it together. And he's like, oh, well, here's the question. Did you just lock me in or out? And at this point, it's definitely the killer on the phone. Um, I was like, I'm a giant chicken chip. So if somebody would have said that to me, I would have hightailed it out of that house and hightailed it out of Lakewood because that's not going to happen in my town. Like, around me at all. It can happen in Lakewood. I wouldn't care. I'd be 500 miles away, chilling on a beach somewhere. The killer wants to show Emma the truth about who she really is, and it's going to hurt. He tells her that everyone is, um, everyone she trusts is lying to her, especially her whore of a mother. And it all started with her mother, and it is going to end with Emma. Oh, man, this is some deep shit. Okay, so next week's episode looks really intense. I haven't, I've only seen the preview one time, which I usually try and watch previews if I'm going to do a recap on it a few times. But I've only seen it once, so I really don't have a strong theory on who I think is going to be murdered next week. It looked kind of like Brooke a little bit. But then I realized the teacher might like some kinky sex. And it also could have been either Audrey or Riley. I don't know, though. I don't see them, if they do kill a main character, like Audrey or Emma. I, well, especially not Emma. But I don't see them doing it this soon. Um, and if it, was, if it were to be Riley, that would simply break my heart. Which leads us into my theories section on Scream. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about suspects. Let's talk about my suspects for this episode and so far. I need to go back and watch season one again to see if they really tally and are consistent, but I think I did have my number one in my top three last episode as well. So coming in, I'm going to do my top three. Coming in at number three... Now let's do my top four. Okay. Coming in at number four is a tie between Will and Kieran. So if the show decides to parallel the movies, Will would obviously be one of one half of the killers. And there's the parallel of Emma running into him. And I just really would not appreciate if the show went in that route. Another person I would not appreciate tied at number four would be Kieran. Just because he is trying to sow this seed of doubt in Emma's mind, he doesn't even know Will. So what is he doing? This is just driving me nuts, but my rating for the likelihood of them being the killers is a, probably a thumbs down. Having it. Number three, more likely for me on the, if the scale is divided like this, my top three are the most likely suspects, in my opinion. Coming in at number, number three is Sheriff Graham. Yes, the sheriff. He is so sketchy. He could potentially be Brandon James's older brother, Troy. We know that Emma's mother changed her name from Daisy and started going by something else. So what is to prevent him from doing the same exact thing? to get revenge for his brother. Ghostface on the phone said, 
um, I'm going to show you about the truth about who you are, and it all started with your mother. So it makes me think that, you know, this is all tying back to Daisy and the time of Brandon James. Coming in at number two is Kevin Duvall. I think that's their last name. I hope. Emma's father. He's been mentioned in the past two episodes, and I just find it a little sketchy because the only notable thing that he's done is be the surviving, um, the sole survivor of the Brandon James massacre. Why is this guy being brought up so freaking much? It's just driving me nuts. I'm like, what? You're going to throw him in episode one and mention him, which that's fine because we, you know, this is relevant information, but now you're going to throw him in episode two as well. This is just a little sketchy for me. And this can also be seen in Ghostface's call saying, I'm going to show you who you really are. Maybe the person outside of Emma's workplace was her father. We see the person in the black hood who we're all assuming to be Ghostface, even though it might not be. And they didn't really show a move to go after Emma. They showed more just standing there. And I was like, what are you doing? So maybe they're trying to talk to Emma. Maybe it wasn't Ghostface. Maybe it was her father who's trying to tell her some things to help her get out of this. Maybe he knows what's going on. Or maybe he is Ghostface and trying to protect his daughter. I don't really know. And my number one suspect. Are you guys ready for this? Because I love this number one suspect so much. And I would be amazed if they go in this route. My number one suspect is Riley. That is right. Riley, the little Asian girl that is having a little relationship with Noah. Riley is just so suspicious to me. First of all, she is going to Noah and he's basically acting like her mentor in all of this stuff about Brandon James and serial killers. And I just think she knows more than she's letting on. She, I think she's playing a little bit dumb to him for getting more information. And we also found out at the very beginning of this episode that she listens to Piper Shaw's autopsy of a crime podcast um, a lot. She's obsessed with it, so maybe she's trying to figure out what's, you know, if the police have any new leads. Also, when Noah is talking about why the killer sent a gif and saying that they need to be recognized on social media. Audrey gets a message on her phone from a friend that goes to another school that's saying a student there is dead. Really? You get a message. Okay. The body was discovered the same morning and you get a message that quickly that a body has been discovered. Or Audrey could be the killer and saying, hey, I did it, but here I'm just going to, you know, say that I got this message when I really know what happened and I'm going to fill everybody in because I want the attention. Like Noah was saying, the killer wants the attention. So that is it for my Scream Season 1, Episode 2 recap. Let me know if you guys like this video. Um, if you want me to continue reviewing Scream, I probably will. Next week, I'm going to try a little bit different format. I am doing the 5 minutes recaps of Pretty Little Liars and talking more about my theories. And I think as this show progresses, I, that is going to be a format that is going to work really, really well. Um, because we've all watched the show and we all know what happened if we're watching this recap, I would hope. And yeah, let me know what you thought of this episode and who are your top three suspects. Because I really want to talk about it in the comments down below. So I'll see you guys there. And I hope you're having a great morning, evening, or afternoon, wherever you're watching this from.